U.S. authorities are expanding their crackdown on a neo-Nazi group that apparently has ties to Canada. Three more people have been arrested, accused of involvement in the white nationalist group known as the Base. Yesterday, a former Canadian Army reservist and two others were arrested by the FBI. It's suspected they too were connected to a neo-Nazi paramilitary group. Authorities believe they were planning to attend a pro-gun rally in Virginia on Monday. And as Jackson Prosco reports, that state's governor is warning there could be violence. Fearing violence, Virginia's capital is on edge, fenced off and under a state of emergency ahead of a pro-gun rally Monday. We're seeing threats of violence. We're seeing threats of armed confrontation and assault on our capital. Thursday, the FBI arrested Patrick Matthews, a former Canadian military reservist, along with two other men. All three are alleged white supremacists and may have discussed traveling to the rally for America's Martin Luther King Day holiday. There's a lot of rhetoric that, get, that these groups use. A lot of it is aspirational. But there's a small minority within this universe of hate that will take action. And that's what the FBI is trying to prevent. Matthews went missing from Manitoba last summer and is alleged to have crossed into the U.S. illegally. In court, prosecutors showed pictures of some of the men at a firing range. They say the suspects belong to a neo-Nazi group called The Base and had amassed hundreds of rounds of ammunition and had built their own assault rifle. Three other men in Georgia with ties to the same group were also arrested. Is it a threat? Absolutely it's a threat. It's every bit as threatening as what ISIS might purport to do in the coming months. Officials in Virginia fear a repeat of the deadly Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, where a woman was killed as white nationalists marched on the city in 2017. This time around, new state laws restricting gun ownership have fueled hatred. There's so much tension, the governor has temporarily banned all weapons near the state capitol building, further angering rally organizers. The governor is trying to take away our ability to carry guns. How, how, how ironic is that? How crazy is that? He keeps poking the bear. By arresting people before the event, officials are sending a message about how closely they'll be watching Monday's rally. Fearing civil unrest could play right into the hands of those who seek to cause it. Jackson Prosco, Global News, Washington. Getting inside the world of neo-Nazi paramilitary groups is not for the faint-hearted. So when Winnipeg Free Press reporter Ryan Thorpe began investigating recruitment posters that were spotted in Winnipeg last year, he didn't know where it would lead. Turns out it led to a man who was just arrested by the FBI in the United States. Patrick Matthews disappeared from his home in Beausjour, Manitoba in August of 2019 after police raided his home and seized firearms. He's now in custody in the U.S. It was Ryan Thorpe's reporting that first exposed Matthews and Ryan joins me now from Winnipeg. Ryan, you spent weeks working to infiltrate this group called The Base and you eventually met Matthews. What was he like? What was he planning? He was, uh, he was, a, he was a strange individual. Uh, when I met him in person in Winnipeg, um, I certainly got the impression that this was someone who took his political views quite seriously. He was openly discussing the possibility of carrying out attacks uh, to perpetrating violence against activists, things like that. So I was uh, incredibly concerned by, by his rhetoric. And then the obvious question was, you know, just how serious was he about the things that he was saying? I think what we saw um, coming out of the U.S. yesterday in terms of the uh, uh, firearms and, and the stockpile of ammunition that he was arrested with, it points clearly that, you know, he was very serious about uh, these professed views. You know, what more do you know about him? He lived in a small town in Manitoba. Do we know how he got involved in this, what his family situation is? Yeah, his family's also from Manitoba. I know he has a brother that is also in the Canadian Army Reserves. Um, in terms of how he got involved with this, he appears to have undergone a process of radicalization over um, several years. He kind of walked me through his, uh, I guess, political trajectory when we met in person, going from something of a, of a libertarian at one point to what he called a racial realist, which would essentially just be a racist, until eventually he got to a point where he uh, adopted uh, neo-Nazism and actively began trying to uh, turn other uh, members of the Canadian Army Reserves who he worked with onto neo-Nazism as well. You know, his story would likely not have come to light without your reporting. Does it suggest to you that there are others like him flying under the radar? 
Yeah, I, I, I think that's safe to say. Uh, the military's own report on this, which was released last year, indicated that over the process of several years, there had been 56, uh, I believe, members of the Canadian Armed Forces who had either been tied to expressing extremist views or who were bona fide members of hate groups. Um, now, at the same time that this report was being produced, Matthews was flying under the radar. So we know that they're not uh, entirely aware of just how many folks in the Canadian Armed Forces uh, hold these views and are active in hate groups. Obviously, this is a, a small, small minority of people we're talking about. It doesn't reflect upon the vast, vast majority of folks who serve in the Canadian Army. Um, but uh, I think it's safe to say that even one extremist in their ranks is uh, too many because we've consistently seen that it only takes one lone actor motivated by these ideologies to cause uh, a lot of violence. Ryan, this guy's been uh, arrested by the FBI. He's in custody in the U.S. now. I know you're continuing to follow the story. Do you have a sense of what happens to him next? Well, he was arraigned in court uh, yesterday. Um, he's facing two separate charges, both of them firearms related. If he is... Um, if he's convicted on both counts and sentenced to maximum sentences, he could face up to 20 years in U.S. federal prison. All right. Well, thanks for your reporting on this. Ryan Thorpe from the Winnipeg Free Press. Appreciate talking to you.